Can Athel clears it away? Can we make it to half time without conceding? As Sals dances his way into the box and gets himself a goal. So the answer to that question of can we keep a clean sheet before half time? Nope. Nope, we can't. We cannot keep a clean sheet. What's going on guys? My name is Adam. I am a super swan. I walk to Club 5 episode 3 of the FM20 Campus to Champions. We still are top of the league as we do go into the last two games of the year. And I say year as in the year 2027. We're in December. It's, it's the end of the year, not the end of the season. So we will be going up against Bologna. And we'll be going up against Empoli as well. So two teams, one in 7th place, one in 16th. As we will try to keep up our title push. But if we look at our league table, I mean, we are topped by a point of AC Milan. Who have a game over us, so we do have a game in hand over them. But think about this, right? We have gone 16 games and we've only dropped points in two games. We've had one draw and one loss. Now you look at that record and you think... They must be having an absolutely brilliant season. They must be clear by a long margin. Well, Juventus are only a point behind us. So it's not all said and done. Yes, we're having a very good season. But AC Milan and Juventus are very much hot on our trails. So I'll show you the games that you've missed out on since you last left us. And it's been, again, a sea of green. So we had Dundalk of Roma last time out. We beat Torino 2-0 with Granelli and Dugalau getting on the score sheet. We won against AEK in the Europa League. Pelly and Azakan grabbing the goals. They did grab a 91st minute consolation goal, which 90th minute goals conceded was not a one-off, as we did draw against Inter Milan, only the second time we've dropped points this season, and we were 2-0 up away from home, and I thought, this is it, we're going to pull away here, and then they scored in the 67th minute, and then Jackson scored in the 92nd minute. So we did go from being 2-0 up to draw 2-2, two so not the most best of games there. But we did beat Perugia 2-0, Coenca and Pelli grabbing the goals. We finished our Europa League 2 group with a 4-0 win over Maribor with Glenn Green, Henricks, Hugo Wirth and a Serrano penalty. So we did top our Europa League 2 group. We will be going into the round of 16 of the Europa League 2, which isn't until, like, f February or March. So we're not going to be focusing on the Europa League 2 for a little bit here. But our last game was a 3-1 win over Cagliari, who they did get a first goal in the fifth minute, but then we just piled on the pressure and we did win 3-1. Granelli, Janinho and Dugalau grabbing the goals. So we will be playing Bologna first, and then we're going to end 2027 with a game against Empoli. So this is going to be the lineup for the Bologna game. We've got Pozek in goal. Pellegrini's now happy at the club. He's withdrawn his transfer request. So it's good that we've got our best left back back on board. Coenca, Juninho and Henriks at the back. Requain and Canafel in the middle with Hugo with Mancini plays ahead of Granelli as Granelli is out for four days. He should be back in time for the Empoli game. Amato on the right-hand side and Glenn Green is going to lead the line for us as uh, he is lacking a bit of match sharpness, so he should have enough about him to get the job done. So we're going to get this game against Bologna underway, our third episode of Club 5, Napoli. Things are going, not Napoli, Lazio, sorry. I was Napoli in FM19, but uh, we're going, things are going very well. So we want to make sure we continue that push for good form. So I'm going to tell them they have a great opportunity to show the pundits why... They were right to back them up as we begin our back-to-back -back Serie A games today. Starting off against Bologna, Lazio are top of Serie A. Can we keep up the good form? As we go into a second-minute highlight, Requena finds Glenn Green with a shot, takes another shot. Oh, Glenn Green almost got himself a goal, but it is a counter-attack for Bologna. Centauri beating his man. He tries to square it. But Pozak with the save. Eight minutes in, Requena from the free kick into the box. It's a free shot from Amato. But is the ref going to rule it out? 
I have a funny feeling he's going to rule it out for offside. He's going to have a look at it. It's disallowed. He is offside. Looking at the lines, he was well offside there. But unlucky, we've shown good effort so far. 22 minutes in, we have a throw in. Who go away for striker, turn left winger. Plays it back to Pellegrini. It's in the box and it's Glenn Green who grabs the first goal. I knew we had it in him. The man who's followed us to four different clubs in this save. If this is the first time you're watching and you don't know who Glenn Green is, he is the man of this save. Started off at Glen Torren, came with us to AIK, came with us to PSV. He's now come with us to Lazio and Glenn Green has just made it 1-0. 27 minutes in, we start on the right-hand side as Canafel plays it to Henricks. Can he cross it in here? Tries to get in the box, but it's deflected. And the way things stand, we are four points clear of AC Milan. Juventus have yet to play, so we will be ahead of them by four points as well, but they will have a game in hand. So we are really making a good shout for a league challenge this season as Glenn Green has just made it 2-0 and the man has oh he's just the man of the save isn't he Glenn Green my favorite player so far of FM20 has just made it 2-0 he is lethal in the box as Hugo Wiff our striker turned winger plays it to Glenn Green it's 2-0 and Lazio are marching to the top of the league 32 minutes in, we start with a goal kick from the back. And like I say, things are going very well here at Lazio. It was a team that, you know, we have finished seventh place for the last two to three years. And now we find ourselves, you know, with a title challenge. And to be honest, I'll take top four. I'm not looking for a title. I'm looking for top four to get Lazio back where they should be in the Champions League. As Amato almost made it 3-0. And that will go out for a corner. But yeah, I mean, Lazio have been in the Europa League too for the last three years. And we are a good, what, nearly 20 points clear of Napoli in fifth place. So Champions League does look like it's going to happen. But we need to keep up the pressure and keep up this good form as long as we can. Glenn Green has just scored a hat-trick. What a man, Glenn Green. We brought him into the side today to get his sharpness back. Because he is a backup to Dougal Owl. I mean, as much as I'm bigging him up, let's not... Let's be honest about this. He is a backup striker, but he's a brilliant backup striker to have. 3-0 up. Coming into halftime, it's been the Glenn Green show so far. He's scored a hat-trick in the first half. Canaffel clears it away. Can we make it to halftime without conceding? As Sals dances his way into the box and gets himself a goal. So the answer to that question of... Can we keep a clean sheet before half-time? Nope. Nope, we can't. We cannot keep a clean sheet before half-time. As uh, Dimitri Salas gets the goal. But do you know what, right? Well, it was a good goal. He danced around two defenders. We'll let them have it, right? We'll give them a chance. How? I just hope that doesn't come back to bite me. You know, the, watch how they come back now and score, like, you know, two more goals. But we're going to praise the team... I'm going to say keep it going. Glenn Green's on a 9.5, although Amato and Mancini are not having the best of games out there. So I, th I don't think this Rom Deut does work in, if I'm being honest. But so I'm going to bring on Azakan. And I'm going to make him an inside forward on support. Because I, do I don't think this is working. I might swap him around, actually. Yeah, I'll swap him around. Because I think Azakan's a righty. Oh, no, he's a lefty. He is a lefty, which is fine, because that's what we want him to do. Cut in from the left. Is he left? Right. No, it's the right way around. I was right the first time. So Azakan can come inside on the left and uh, get some shots away. So we're going to start the second half. 3-1 up. Surely they can't come back. 66 minutes. It's been a quiet second half. Nothing much has happened. Nothing to report. So we're going to leave Glenn Green on. Canaffel's looking a bit tired. So I'll bring on Nicky Noster to come in on the midfield there. So second sub made, 3-1 up. Not much going on in this second half. 84 minutes again. We've had no highlights in this second half. Raquane is on 71. Henriks is on 72. So I'll bring on Ario to come on at right back for our last substitution of the game. Five minutes to go. We're going to get all three points here. 
Coming up to full time, a very dead second half. Literally nothing happened. But it is the Glenn Green Show as we have won this game 3-1. I'm going to tell them I'm very pleased with the performance. We have to keep up this good form for as long as it lasts. Because we all know what Football Manager can do. It can take away your form just like that. Gone. Your form is gone. So we do pick up a 3-1 win. Roma drew against Sassuolo, so our rivals are dropping points like no tomorrow. But Lazio Hammer, Bologna, we're going to absolutely praise Glenn Green. What a guy, what a performance. I mean, let me, let me show you Glenn Green, right? For those uneducated, this is the man, he's 21 years old. We picked him up at Glen Toran as a 16-year-old. He was in, we took over Glen Toran, he was in our under-18s, and he was the best player at the club. And we were thinking, why is he in the under-18s? We played him the next season, scored 22 goals for Glen Toran. We then left to go to AIK. We brought him with us, scored goals there. We brought him to PSV. He scored goals there. I mean, last season, we put him into the, uh, the young PSV or the B team of PSV. And he scored 28 goals in 32 games at that level. I mean, I know it's like the second division of Dutch football, but still, 28 goals at that level. So he can score goals. And so far in his Lazio career... He's scored five goals from five appearances. So, Glenn Green can score goals. And he's just proved it today at the Stadio Olimpico. So, we look at the competition. So, 17 games in. Four points clear of AC Milan. Four points clear of Juventus. But they do have a game in hand. So, I think it's pretty much a top three at the moment. With Lazio, Milan and Juventus. So, we're going to move on to the next game of our sort of Serie A adventure. The last game of 2027 and against an Empoli side who are 16th in the league. It is half time in the video. Thank you for reaching this far. YouTube advises me that over two thirds of watchers are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're enjoying what you've seen so far, go drop a subscription down there and help support the channel. It'll be very much appreciated. And if you're already subscribed, Thank you very much, as always. So I'll let you carry on with the rest of the video. Hopefully, you are enjoying so far. Only a few changes for the Empoli game, so we'll run through the team. we got Poazek in goal, Pellegrini, Zagadou comes in for Koenka, Juninho and Ario comes in for Henriks. Requena and Monchiola in the midfield with Hogarth, Mancini and Azakan's going to come in on the right as uh, I don't think Amato had the best of games at Romdoita. I'm going to give Azakan a chance at Romdoita just to see how well he does. If he doesn't do well, then I think we might have to bin off the uh, the Romdoita. We might have to turn it back into an inside forward. And Glenn Green keeps his place because I can't drop him. He scored a hat-trick in the last game. So, Tugalau, you uh, have to be on the bench again because Glenn Green's going to be in the starting 11. So, again, we'll see if we can try and keep up this good form. We are still at the top of the league. So I'm hoping we can do a job here. Oh, very interesting. A 4-3-3. I don't see a 4-3-3 very often. So I'm going to tell the team to pick up where you left off last time out. None of them really care. I'm going to tell them I have faith in them to make the difference. Now they all care. Now they're all motivated to get the job done. So we are going up against Empoli today. They are in 15th place in the league. Can we get another win today? And hopefully keep up our top four push. Corner, six minutes in. Empoli get an early goal. And it's 1-0 to Empoli as Kiras Masangu gets the first goal. They are playing in the blue. We're playing in the white. And the first chance of this game. And we find ourselves behind as the header towards the back post. And we're already facing an uphill struggle. 12 minutes in. AC Milan are also losing at the moment, so it's a bit of a turn up for the buck so far in this first 10 minutes. As Glenn Green's got a free shot here. Oh, puts it wide. Glenn Green, with the form he was in, I thought he was like going to bury it. 18 minutes in, we start from the back. Pretty even game. Both teams have had two shots. We've edged the possession battle so far, but it is Empoli that uh, find themselves in the driving seat. As Hugerworth takes a shot over the bar. Is it going to be one of those games where we just cannot find the target? Throw in 24 minutes. We start on the right. 
Aria with a cross in the box. Glenn Green. Oh, and there it is. It's in the goal. And Glenn Green has scored his fourth goal of this episode. And he's single-handedly dragging Lazio towards the top of the league. He gets the first header. It's saved. But Ario crosses it in. Glenn Green headers it. It's saved by the keeper. And then he taps it into the net. And he's just made it 1-1. We are back in the game. On the half an hour mark. We are back in the game. And now we need to see if we can try and get a winning goal. As uh, not, not like that, Azakan. I don't think we're going to get a goal like that. <laughs> but we do go into another highlight straight after. So I'm hoping that the shot by Azakan is going to lead to a goal. As he's back in the box. Crosses it for Glenn Green. As a can shoots off the post. Oh, boys. That was unlucky. Very, very unlucky. I think it bounced off about like five players. Before it ended up coming away. But Mancini recycles the corner. It has a shot. It's deflected again for another corner. 38 minutes. About six or seven minutes before half time. Empoli have only had the one shot on target. As Hugo Weir finds Azakan and it's 2-1. And the Rom Deuter seems to be working. So there we go. There's proof. It just makes sure you have to find the right player in the position. Because Amato doesn't think he does very well at Rom Deuter. But Azakan seems to be relishing in that position. As we are now 2-1 up. We've turned the game around before half time. Well, might as well see this through to half time together. Look at those stats. 15 shots, 6 on target, 50% possession. Oh no, 60% percent possession. Try say that five times quickly. And we've turned this game right around here. So I'm going to give them a very good team talk. I say I'm very happy with the performance so far. Keep it up. Second half. Let's kill this game off and grab another goal. 57 minutes. So just about coming up to the hour mark. I would like to get a third goal just to kill this game off, really, as Hugo Wave tries to cross it. It is intercepted, and now Empoli going to build from the back. They go long ball direct, but Zagadou is there to meet the strikers. Nothing gets past him. We've got, to be fair, Zagadou, we've got very good centre-backs. We've got Zagadou, Janinho, and Koenka, all very good. As Ario tries to play it in, but it's intercepted, long ball... And Laguimina, Laguimina, oh, it's in the goal. And Toninho Laguimina gets it. And they've had two shots and scored two goals. Uh, it's, it's football manager. I'm not going to moan because it, it, it just happens. But uh, Empoli get us on the counter here as Laguimina beats Zagadou. And then he gets a very good shot, to be fair, in the corner. And Empoli have had two shots on target and scored two goals. 62 minutes. I told I told everybody we needed a third goal. Nobody listened to me. They thought, oh, do you know what? We're absolutely all over this game. We don't need a third goal. But this is why we need three goals. We always need to keep ahead. Because Empoli are holding on to this draw. So we're going to go into tactics. We're going to try and tweak things a bit here. I'm going to go attack it. I'm going to try and bring the game to him a bit. But both of our centre-backs are on 6.5. So just as I was praising Zagadou, he's not having a very good game. So I'm going to bring him off and bring Cuenca on for him. Uh, who else? Mancini. Again, he's having a poor game. So I think what I'm going to do, we're going to go drastic here, boys. We're going to move Mancini up front. We're going to bring Dugalau on. We're going to make him a complete forward, because why not? And we're going to go with two strikers. We're going to go two strikers... We're gonna make, we're gonna make him an, in, an inverted winger. We're, we're going experimental today, boys. We're gonna go with an inverted winger with Azakan. We're gonna play two strikers, and we're gonna try and uh, put some low crosses into the box to try and get them into the strikers. So slight tactical tweak with the idea of trying to get more balls into our strikers to get some goals. But is this an actual highlight? Or is this one of those highlights that, because I've made a change, the game's going to show me? As Hugo Wirf gets into the box. If we score now, I'll revert back to what we were doing before. As Azakan plays it into Hugo Wirf. Oh, unlucky. But it's now time to make the changes. 80th minute. We're still struggling to get some highlights. I'm going to go a lot more direct here. We're going to not play out defence. We're just going to lump it upfield, to be honest with you. We're going to distribute to over the opposition defence, take long kicks. 
We're going to throw everybody forward. We deserve to win this game. We just need to now uh, pull it through, really, to be honest with you. Uh, we've got one more change we can make. So, Raquane is having a poor game. So, we're going to bring Kanafel on for him. But I think I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to change Hugoworth to an attacking inside forward to try and get something here. I might move Kanafel up front. Or as a, at least as an attacking midfielder. To try and get something here. Try and get a result. It's a little bit risky what we're doing here. But I think it's going to result in a goal. One way or the other. So 10 minutes. Can we find a goal? Coming up to full time. The tactics didn't really make any difference. To be honest with you. We haven't had any highlights to speak of. So it's a very disappointing 2-2 draw. A game that we really did dominate. But you know. I'm going to give an aggressive. You were not good enough. We should have won three points there. So we do drop points in the race for that championship. But we keep us up there for a top four. Because, you know, we are still nearly, what, 16 points clear of fifth place. But we drew. AC Milan drew as well. So at least we've got that in the fact that we are still four points clear of AC Milan. But Juventus can overtake us with that game in hand. So... It is drop points, but as I can, you did well. You got yourself a goal as a Rom Deuter. Pozek reveals Swan Fury. And I think Mo Jon Manicola or Monkiola being scouted by the Athletic Bilbao boss. So league table, we are still top of the league, but Juventus have got that game in hand. So, you know, they got a better goal difference than us as well. So as much as we're having a very good season, Juventus are probably having just as good of a season than we are so you know just because we've only dropped points in three games out of 18 does not mean we're gonna win this league and to be honest i don't i'm not looking to win the league i just want top four because that's what the board want and that's what i'm going to deliver so the schedule for next time let's see who we got oh well straight away i know where we're coming back we're going to come back for the big boys, Juventus and AC Milan. So both of the teams that are in the top three. Oh, it's going to be a big one next time. Yeah, we're 100% coming back for those two games. So two teams that are in that title race with us. And plus, we'll be at the end of the January transfer window as well. So I'm not looking to make signings. I haven't really got a transfer budget, to be honest with you. If I looked at the finances, how much we got? Yeah, we've only got 2 million or 3 million in the kitty. So I'm not planning on making sign-ins unless we get offers coming in. But I'm pretty happy with the squad, to be honest. There's not players that I would want to get rid of. But who is wanted? Pellegrini wanted by China. Monchiola, who's he wanted by? Athletic Club. Hugo Wirf, China. Michelotti. Brescia. Cuenca. China. China's want all of our players. Serrano wanted by Athletic Club. Henrik's China. So if we can get some like big bids from China, like for example, Henrik's, I'd let go. If we had a 30 million pound bid for Henrik's, he's on 170 grand a week. I'd let him go, 100%. So I'll leave you with the league table. So big episode next time out. We've got Juventus and AC Milan. So both sides in the top three. And I think this is going to be a real test of our title credentials. But leave a like if you enjoyed, guys. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager 2020 content. We will be uploading Campus to Champions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6 p.m. B BST. BST. And tune in next time as the top three clash as Lazio will be taking on Juventus and AC Milan. Thank you very much for watching.